Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome, welcome back. Oh, I've not said that for a while, have I? I don't know where that came from. Uh, yeah, yeah, what we're doing today, I'm going to be sewing the signatures into my hardcover junk journal I'm making. Uh, so if you've got any hardcover junk journal and you want to know how to sew the signatures in, this one will be for you. You don't have to have made the same journal as me. I will link to me making it though. I've just basically made it from an old book. Uh, you will see I have made the template, but I will be showing you how to make a template. I just find it easier to teach something to someone. Well, I find it easier to learn something if I can see the end product that I'm aiming for. Also, if I muck it up on camera, I can default to that one, can't I? Yeah. So, that's the template I've already made. And I'll show you how I made it. I've got seven signatures. There's about... I've took a few pages out of each signature. I'll show them as we get further on. Because once I'd gone and put all my pockets in, it was getting a little bit too chunky. So I've tended to take out the signatures where I got two papers that were very similar. So I've still got a really good variety. So yeah, there's between five and seven pages per signature. I'm just going to keep one there to help with making my template. So yeah, that's what I'm going to start with. I'll put timestamps in this video so you can jump about to what you need. But we're going to crack on and get these signatures sewn in first. Right, I've got some card here. Uh, this is a new piece because I can't find a scrap long enough. And I'm going to make my template out of this. So grab my trimmer and I'll show you the first thing I do. First thing is I want to know the height and width of my spine. Now the book is eight and a half by six so it's going to be eight and a half. Now the spine width on the outside is just short of two inches. It's like one and seven eighths. Inside it would slightly less than that but if you're not sure start with the width of what it is outside you can always trim it down if you see I like it to fit just perfectly like that yeah and then I clip it in so that I can put my holes in my book so I've got my bit of paper I'm going to cut it down to eight and a half inches oh, I've only got my little trimmer so I'm going to have to measure what eight and a half inches is I'm not getting big chompy one out just for one cut. So eight and a half inches is there. And then I'm going to cut, I'll cut a couple, two one and three quarter inches wide, which is a little bit less than outside of my spine. And that's a little bit. That's better. So I will then cut it to... I can see marks on this trimmer easier on camera and I think that's because it's old and it's got dirt in grooves which sounds really bad doesn't it? It's, it's ink, it's, there's all sorts of ink grooves, it's not just dirt I don't keep it ink garden when I'm not crafting So I'll do... We've got two there just in case I uh, get too busy waffling that I forget where I'm up to Right, I've got some other examples of templates because when I've used the template, I don't chuck it away. I can use it again if I'm making a book that size. So these, you can see, I've not even drawn any lines on because I make my templates by halfing and halfing and halfing. You'll see what I mean. Well, you can see there, I fold that in half and then that was a three signature one but we're making a seven signature one so it's got to be slightly different anyway shut waffling and start doing woman start doing wow well, i've sharpened a pencil with that one yeah so first things first this is my template i'm going to fold it in half that way and i'm also going to fold it in half that way i will draw these lines in pencil so you can see them also, I find it easier to make the template when I'm doing a lot of signatures. Although, having said that, I've never done a seven signature one. I have always do five. That, well, I'm not, I don't always do five. Five is the biggest I've done before. So, I'm now going to draw where I've creased. Just checking that's in the right place. There we go, you can see it now. And I'm going to do the same here. 
there we go so I've creased it along those two lines now I did try creasing it to make the template but it's a little bit fiddly when we're doing seven signatures all close together so here's what I do next I've got this centering ruler if you don't have a centering ruler you can use lines on your mat you can, you can use anything you could put three marks on something I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that because I'm sort of waffling now aren't I if you didn't have a centering ruler, all you'd have to do is that's your set, that'd be your centre. I don't think there's anyone in the world that got a ruler. And then you could fold it again. About there. Each one needs to be, that's well, a slight less than half of your template. So you've now got three marks there, haven't you? So here's what I'm going to do. I'll, in fact, I'll do it that with that without even using ruler. Right, I'm going to line that centre mark up halfway along there. And as well as just guessing where halfway is, I'm using these two lines to check that that gap and that gap are about even to help me find the centre. And then I'm going to put a dot. And I'm quite happy with that. And then I'm going to do the same there. Yeah. In fact, I'll switch back to my centering ruler now. So that's my centre mark. Yeah. Do you know, I found it easier with that bit of card, to be honest. So these other grid lines just help you guess where the centre is. That's for anyone who doesn't have a centering ruler. I was thinking of buying one. They are very handy. I'm just going to make that mark bigger as well. So I've got those two marks now. Now I'm going to come in and draw a line. I can use these other lines on my centering ruler to see if my line is straight. So that's that one. And that one. So can you see what I mean by I'm guesstimating rather than measuring? So there's no numbers to work out, there's no maths to do. They're not perfect, but I don't, it don't matter to me. I'm quite happy that they're not quite perfect. I think it all adds to the handmade look. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing and put a, light, a dot there, there, there and there. Now you're beginning to see why I always make junk journals with an odd number of signatures, aren't you? Because I like to use this halving method. So, use your centre inside, woman. I'm now going to put another dot there. If you've got a signature that just works out perfectly and you can put a signature every quarter of an inch, do it. But this one doesn't. If you're making a book from scratch and you can decide on the... would see a signature, it'll be easier. It's not, it's an old book I'm using. So I've gone ahead and done all these dots. Eee. So each dot that I've done is going to be one signature. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put these, all these other lines in. Again, I'm using the marks on my ruler to help and yeah they're not perfect I'm just going to turn it ruler around because we've got a few more marks there we go that's made my life a bit easier and that's that and that's another one and one more Isn't it quiet when I'm trying to line some up? There we go. So I've now got the marks for all my seven signatures and I've got a gap at either side. Now you'll see somehow I've got that one wider than that one. Don't matter. I'm going to get my trimmer and cut it off because we already know we need to make this template slightly narrower to fit in. Even if I'd not made one before I'd know that and I'll show you how we know that. Right, put my template in. Right, can you see what? It's puckered now, it don't fit. It's too big, it's too wide. I've got to trim it down a little. 
so because that side's a little bit bigger I will trim it down there first and then I will see if it fits so I'm just doing this by guesstimation can you see those gaps are a little bit more even now that's so we've got a gap between our first and last signatures and the covers so I'm going to put that in now and see oh that seems to be fitting a bit better now make sure you get it in those grooves yeah that's that's perfect now that is spot on yeah so we can go ahead and put our other marks in that's gonna I mean we've got there's a bigger gap there than there but I'm not gonna lose any sleep in fact the actual dot is I've missed the dot and to one I've drawn line so it's it's gonna be good enough it's gonna be good enough right where am I gonna put my other holes now for top and bottom I'm gonna grab one of my signatures and I'm gonna guesstimate it I mean you don't have to measure this you can just look at it and say yay and yay I like to have them even so I'm gonna get my center ruler again right way book um, I'll do it on that line so I'm thinking three inch mark yeah that'll be good we don't want it too near end and we don't want it too near middle just but we don't want it I don't always want it just halfway because I find that's too near middle so I'm gonna go three inches down on this and do it there so that's my line there three inches up and that's my line there and then here's another beauty of the centering ruler you can use that centre mark to line up and know now that we're going to be straight when I put these dots in so that's that so we've got all seven dots and these are going to be our holes where we puncture the spine of the book and we'll be using this template again maybe sometimes I don't use the template to put the holes in our signatures so that's that no maths in sight you can put a line across if you want I didn't you'll have noticed with my old templates I don't always put the lines on because when I'm not on camera and I haven't got the lights on I can see the creases <laughs> there we go so that's our template and just to show you that one's going to work just as well as my other one I'll swap to that one yeah so yeah we've got twin templates now and I'm also going to write top there I quite like that that's not as perfect as this one right and get it in place there you go I'm going to get it in place and then put my clips on otherwise it wouldn't be perfectly in the middle would it <laughs> I just clipped my finger as well I'm not safe to be at, like art me am I and then clip the bottom so there we have our template I think it needs hutching up a bit hutch it up woman Hutch it up, hutch it. Check that's still right. Here it is. So there we go. So I'm now going to go and punk, punch, punch shells. Yeah, just punch it with my fist. I'm not going to use this brad oil. Pop those holes through. Right, I'll, I've got this. Me, I like it. It's, oh, I've just thrown some more of that away today. That might have been even better. A bigger flat piece. I might go fishing in my bin later. And I'm going to put my holes in now. So here we go. There we go. Let's have a look how they're going. Yeah, looking good. So we've got 7, 14, 21 holes to make now. 
14 holes to go. And this should mean that when you sew them in now it's all going to look nice and neat. Don't go too mad with your brad hole. Cause can you see how that gets wider? <laughs> Don't stick it so far through that your holes are enormous. That's why I'm just sort of like controlling it with my finger. I'm going to turn that upside down to find it easier to do that. Again, it's something you get a feel for. I mean, I am normally very heavy handed with things. I mean, you can see that one's not going to be perfect already, but hey ho. If I was still in perfectionist mode, I'd have rubbed that line out and redone it further over, but I'm over that now. Let's have a look at the outside. There we go. We've got all our holes. So I did have a few people say they would like to see the spine decorated, but there's not going to be much spine to decorate, is there? Because that's all going to be taken up by the wax linen thread. Ooh, one thing I'm going to do, though, I'm going to punch a hole in the top and put an eyelet in, because I do want to add a a charm, a dangle. I'm, I'm going to show you a dangle now that I've practiced making. I didn't make it for any book in particular. I didn't make it for this book, but do you know what? I think it might actually go. Whee! I'm loving it. It's not got any turquoise on at all, but I'm looking at, at it now and I think it could go with this book. I was planning to make another one with some turquoise. Again, I've just done it with wax linen thread. I've taken a lot of inspiration from uh, Joanna Clough with this. I've plaited some of my cords at the top because I thought that looked nice. And I've just, yeah, I've just randomly gone and put beads on. I will, I'll do a tutorial on making this actually. But I may end up using this one. I'm not going to put it on with that giant book ring. No, no, no. I made it on a tiny little, that's a tiny little keyring type thing. But yeah, hmm. I, mean, I know uh, you want to make says so that you can't take them off. I prefer to be able to take mine off if I want to. Well, yeah, so now we've got those holes in. I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm just going to get my bone folder. And I'm just going to... You'll still see where the holes are. Just so they're not too sticky out eh? on the outside of the book and then what I would do is go back through I don't know why I just think it looks a little bit better and if like this it's a painted book if you're not happy with any of this white that may start showing just touch it up with your paint I'm not going to do I may actually ink it. That might be an idea. Because this is an area where the dirt would gather on the book. I tried to put a little bit of gilding wax in that and it didn't work. But I left it. Just makes the book look grungy, doesn't it? So I'm going to grab my cropper dial. And I'm just going to put a hole there. I'm going to use the big side. If you don't have a cropper dial or you're not going to put an eyelet in, use your brad hole or whatever else you're using to make your holes. Just check. I think I'll have it a little bit nearer the top of the book. That'll be good. Check I've got it in the middle-ish. That's the middle-ish. There we go. And I'm just going to pop an eyelet in. Grab some eyelets. I'm going to go with the... Uh, I'll go with that bronze one. In fact, that's slightly bigger than the hole. So, let's see if my bradle's big enough to make that hole a bit bigger. When we're done throwing it around... Yeah, it is. 
There we go. The reason they end up a little bit bigger is, do you know, this is in inches. And then we buy the eyelets over here in millimetres and they're not always quite the right size. But that's an easy way to solve it. The setter will still do it. That really needs to stop rolling across my desk. So let's set this. There we go. And that looks nice. I like to make sure there's nothing sharp. There you go. So that looks good. Right. I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea and I'll be back with you in two ticks to sew these in. I need to give me a voice a rest. And I'm back. Right. I've got just the things I need on my desk now. I've tidied a few bits away. I've got my wax linen thread. I've got my brad all still. I've grabbed a needle needle of your choice i tend to find something it has got a point on but it's not majorly sharp this it's got a big eye but it's also not too thick i did buy some book binding needles and that's far too thick that makes the holes in your spine and your books just really chompy i don't like it i just don't so i've got that i've got my template and there's a few different ways you can go about putting your holes in your signatures. I did say I wasn't going to use a punching cradle, but one way you can do it is this. This is a punching cradle if you've not seen one. Put your signature in. When you've got all your pages lined up as you want them, I'm just going to check. Any short pages are going to be caught by all... There's no short pages in that one, so I just need to find the centre point. There it is. Jiggly pages as you want them. And then you can get your template. The middle signature is normally the best one. And then you can pop it in there. I'm going to have to turn this sideways so I can see. Normally I'd be stood up looking over it. And you can just line it up so that you've got an equal part of your template showing over the top and over the bottom of that cover. And then you can go ahead and I might as well do it and punch on your three holes and then what should happen what should happen is they will line up nicely so I've got I've got a piece of wax linen thread it's three times the height of the book and I've just threaded it through so I'm going to go in that center hole some people like to clip the pages at this point I always sometimes find it more trouble than it's worth. Some people agree, some don't. See, can't even use clip, can I? <laughs> can't use clips. Useless. So, ah, I'll use that. And then we're going to go, this is the front signature. That will go through. So what you'll then find is that your page is, well, it's even enough into it. I think it's a bit near at top than bottom. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over it not being perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this in. So I've gone out of that one. Then it doesn't matter whether you go in the bottom or the top for this one. I'm going to go in there. I tend to not bother that I'm going through cover and the signature together. This is also why I like to leave three times the height of the book for sewing in. They reckon you can get away with two and a half times, but I prefer three. Then we can go back in through that hole. Oh, I can't see it. No, can you see what's happened there? It's, <laughs> it's come through that natural hole. There we go, I can see it now. Get through all the holes that are already there, woman. If I were doing this on my own, I would be doing it like this towards me. Oh, perhaps you could see it and you probably won't be able to see it. So that's gone through. Leave enough there to tie a knot. If you're worried that's going to slip through, get another clip or something. Those little plastic sewing clips are good if I add any to hand. Here we go. Grab your sewing clips, woman. <coughs> on my window so if you've got a flash of light then 
yeah, if you're worried about, if your holes are big and you're worried about that pulling through, just pop a clip on it while you do this bit. You don't have to, you'll find a way that suits you. Then we're going to go back in this hole. See, I've clipped that together and my holes still aren't together, are they? This is why I don't bother with clips. Stab myself, only slightly. Yeah, when you've got clips, I tend to find if your pages have come misaligned, you end up putting new holes in your signatures. That's why I don't like them. So then we're going to go through that one. Am I bleeding? Not really. I just, I always have to hurt myself doing things. Then we'll back up through that one. Check my inside. I'm sorry for all the flipping, but that's sewing in signatures. I think I could perhaps do with zooming out a little. And then back in that one. Hopefully I'm going to get all the way through the book and the signature. Just check it there. I'm going to take that off now because it's just in my way. Check that's going through. Yeah. We done it. If you have to struggle pulling that out, you can get pliers and just pull it. I'll make your hole a bit bigger. Make sure that's through. Then before I tie it, I just check we've got nothing bagging about there. I've got quite a bit of those strings off the book caught up, so I'm just going to pull them out. There we go. No bagginess there. And just tie it, and I'm just going to knot this. I'm going to knot this twice. Because I'm going to cut it off. I don't want long strings in this. You can leave long strings. It's entirely up to you. I'm quite happy with that. So that is the first signature in. And it is the front one. So there we have it. Signature number one. Only six to go. Woohoo! <laughs> I'll do another one with you. This is signature number two. Now this time I'm not going to use my punching cradle. I'll be quite honest with you. I find it more hindrance than help sometimes when you're using, when you're putting in lots of signatures. All I'm going to do this time is I'm going to line it up. Can you see what I mean about all my signatures not being the same height anyway? Yeah, so I want that one to come a little bit lower than the front one. And it's still a smidgen higher. Can you see what I mean? And for this one, I'm going to get my pencil. Oh, I'll tell you what, now I'm going to use my disappearing ink pen. That's really good. Aha. If you don't have one, use pencil. You can rub it out. And I'm just going to mark there where I want my holes. And I'm going to grab my brad all again. I'm going to check all my signatures are as I want them to be. I've got a short page there, so I'm just going to check. Go back to signature number one. That's going to be caught by the bottom one and the middle one. I'll, I'll not get it caught by all three stitches. Yeah, I'm happy with having that bottom and middle for a change. And... I've actually got there in the middle, haven't I? I didn't want there in the middle, I wanted there in the middle. So I'm just going to move that there. I'll have swapped it round at some point. Right. Now I'm going to come in and wear... Do you know, I think that ink's faded already. I know it hasn't, I can just see it. And I'm going to poke through that ink has faded I'm going to redo it with pencil that was amazing how quick that faded absolutely amazing I can't see it so do it again 
I mean, if you're really, really good, you can just come in and poke your hole now, but I'd be too scared of stabbing that page because I don't know my own strength. Well, like I say, you can just rub these off. We know everything's fine now, don't we? Right, middle of your book, woman. There it is. Make sure you've got it where you want. Yeah, well, we've put holes in, haven't we? We've put the marks in. There we go. There we go. And line those two back up. That one might be a bit high. There we go. I just find it easier to see when I've put the mark on. There we go. I'm gonna get I'm not gonna show you all seven signature all seven signatures by the way. I'm gonna do this one, then I'll do the others off camera, then I'll come in and show you the last one. That's that. I mean, I've lost my needle. Lost my needle. Right, spare needle. Ta da! <laughs> I did get a spare needle because I'm an absolute nightmare with needles. And let's sew this one in. Right. Open that up. So through there. Through the middle to the outside. It is quite tight this so I'm not going to put that clip on. Then again you can go back in through the top or the bottom, don't matter. And some people start from middle, some start from back to front. I like to start from front to make sure I've got my front signature nicely and then I can adjust the others accordingly, if that makes sense. So that's that. <sighs> where's the hole gone? Back through the hole. And it doesn't bother me having to do these separately. I didn't quite get my hole. Just tighten that up, woman. No, that's I'm trying to stick it through a dot on paper. Crazy lady. Should have gone to spec savers, really, shouldn't I there? Back up through there. Then I'm going to miss that all together and go back out through the bottom one. Let me grab. I'm going to grab my big chompy clip here. Wait till you see this paper clip. Look at that for a paper clip. There you go. That's going to keep that out of way. So I can go back out this hole, just tighten that up, it will line all your holes back up. Back out that second one. Yeah, that's world's biggest paper clip that. I got it from Poundland. <laughs> and then... looking good then we're going back in that center one again try not to get your needle through that thread but the world will not end if you do it can be sorted I've done it many times get the right away I wish I had a bigger desk sometimes 
back through the centre. You want one piece of string either side so that you can just pull it and tighten it. Again, check you've got no bagginess there. Got none there. It's looking good on outside. I can now safely tighten that and tie it. Like I said, I'm doing two knots on these. There you go. So that's two signatures in and that's looking pretty nice and pretty neat on outside. I like that. I found me the needle night, wouldn't it book? I'll take that off. So yeah, it's already starting to come together. And we've got it doesn't seem like there's much gap between your signatures, does it? When you make that template, but in reality there's more than you think. Now, can you see how I've got the little white bits? I'll just show you this before I soak rest in. I've got it out ready. I like to grab a little brush like this. And I'm going to grab my ink pad. Just put a teeny bit of ink on my brush. There you go. And then that's... All looking old, you know, like the dirt in over the years would gather around these points. Get rid of that bit, you don't need that bit in, woman. So there we have it. So that's two signatures in, and I will do the next four, and then I'll come and do the last one with you. So two ticks. And I'm back again, I'm like a bad penny, aren't I? So I've got everything sewn in apart from the last signature so i'll show you it's looking good i like it i think i like them strings i really don't know so we've just got the one more signature to do there that's what it's looking like on back you can see there that's wider than that i said it would be because of what i did on my template but it really do not bother me it's, it just do not bother me it adds to that handmade look i think we're never looking for perfection, are we? So we've got the first six signatures sewn in and they're looking pretty good. If I do so, so myself, I've got little bits of string everywhere and I've just got this last one to do. The last one can be the trickiest. I find that with five signatures and this is my first seven signature journal just because it's just right up to there and there you've got less room to work. So let's crack on. I've got my bit of thread uh, threaded. I've got my thread threaded, yeah. This is my last signature. I'll just make sure everything's where I want it to be. I must admit to getting carried away and starting to poke holes we are at you and then I thought, no, stop that. You're supposed to be showing this last signature. Are we in shot? We are in shot. So I'm going to line that up how I want it, find my middle page and I'm, I must say I'm liking this method and just stab your book woman. I didn't do any of this rubbish while I were off, <laughs> off camera. I'm liking just doing it like this you know. So if you flick it up and down you can see exactly where that hole is supposed to be. There you go. Yeah I stabbed my book a bit. There we go. Like I say, if you want, clip it at this point. I've not found the need to. There we go. Got it exactly where I want. If it's off by a millimetre or so, it's not going to make any difference anyway. So in through my middle. there I'll just make sure I'm holding that yet yeah. then in the top I'm going I 
and then in that top set of holes. Okay, and then back down. It's hard to see where my hole is here. Can you see? This was a book that I've taken a page that I've taken out of a book, and all the holes that were already there in the signature are. Yeah, that's it. So I'll look at that one below. I'm sorry if I keep twisting and turning it. That's just that's just what I need to do. And back out through that one make sure I'm in the middle of the signature again then I'll go in Quiet when I'm doing this, aren't I? Very quiet. There we go. Make sure I've got one string either side. Oh, <laughs> took take your needle off. Yeah, I meant to do that. There we go. Pull it tight, but not overly tight. You don't want to come out and rip your paper. No loops. I always do this. No, it's the one time I don't check for loops. That I've got one, no loops. Looking good on the outside. I'm really liking the look on the outside. And tie it off. And that's our seventh signature. Snippity snip. I didn't put any in upside down, which is unusual for me. So, oh, I just like that. I, I like these strings, I don't know. I just do. If You can cut them off if you want to. I'm quite liking them. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, that just gives me so much pleasure to see that like that. I might have to try a nine signature journal. But look at that. That looks the nice and straight. That pleases me. I'm just going to come in with my little brush again. And I'm going to put a little bit of ink on those holes to cover up the white. Like I say, I'm not going to come in with blue. I'm quite happy doing it with my ink. Because like I say, that's where the dirt would gather in a book that is this old. Well, the cover was quite old, actually. It was from the 70s. So, yeah, the cover of the book is 50 years old. You know, when you said 70s, it doesn't seem that long ago, does it? 50 years ago? My word. So, yeah, I just think that looks that bit better. Right. And then, ooh. Quick, quick little flip through. I'm going from back, just to be different. I've showed you some of the signatures and pockets. You saw that one. It is a quick flick as well, this. Because this video is going to be long enough as it is. And I've got my closure to do yet. Oh, that was a nice... I put like a huge belly band in. It's, it's more like a pocket because nothing's going to come out of that end, end, is it? And it's just some embossed card that I used. I've been having fun using my die cut machine doing some embossing. Another embossed pocket there, quite like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not even sure where alt pockets are. Oh, there's a vellum pocket there again. I mean, I can add more pockets. I've just done all the sewn pockets. That's one of the ledger pockets. Oh, I've got an envelope I want to stick in there. I wasn't sure. No, I'm glad I didn't because now it's sewn into the signature it would get stuck so I'm really glad I didn't do that I may just add it with a paper clip on the outside of his signature yeah got that, I like that I've got oh that's a top tuck again that's some embossed vellum I've used the leaf embossing folder fabric pocket with that lovely bee fabric from Sam yeah, a pocket there, 
and you turn it over and it's a flip out as well. I just glued along the edge of that page and just sewed around that to make a flip and a pocket. Another pocket there, I've gone around the edge of that one about three times. But I, it, you can't see the sewing there because I've just sewn onto the paper and then I've glued that one on. A bit of a hybrid pocket that one then, isn't it? That lovely braille paper. I've put a pocket there. Keep going. Yeah, it just seems to go on forever now. It's all put together, doesn't it? Oh, that's a little cross stitch card and I've took the cross stitch out. And again, I've made a little pocket. That's so cute. I liked the white on white. You don't know, often see white in my journals. I don't know why. We've got a pocket there. And that one, it's sort of like I had a double cover this signature. I should have showed it you before I sewed it in. Yeah, it's got a flip pocket. What else we got? That fabric. Yeah, top tuck there. That's the paper from Rachel and Bella Crafts. It's the Nana's Roses, the one I used in the last challenge. So there we have the signature sewn in. Right now, what what did I do off camera? You'll you'll have seen some bits I did off camera. I aged the cover up a little bit. Ooh, <laughs> just let let me zoom out a little bit. That's better. You can see. Yeah. It's also got brighter. I aged the cover. I'll show you what I used. I used these. These are the donkey's years old. Don't know if you can get them anymore. I thought before I go buying gold gilding uh, wax, I've got this. It's called Gilding Blush. This is a fusion. These are supposed to be colours they go on top, but they've never gone anything like that colour, to be honest. I don't know whether it's with age that have gone dark. And I mean, look at that. Ooh, and it's all a bit crumbly as well, but it still worked. So I used a bit of that and a bit of that one. They smell like shoe polish, so that's probably why they still work. Lasts forever that stuff, doesn't it? And I just put it on with my finger, just random bits here, there and everywhere. And I also got my blending tool and I came in, oops, string everywhere and I just, yeah age the edges with that. I'm still putting a bit more on now and I went just slightly all over like that. I got that same little brush and now I'm coming close in and I put a little bit of the gilding wax around here. I'm doing this again because I've still got a bit of ink on brush and in there again just all the places where dirt would naturally gather and yeah I've got what I wanted now the look of an old grungy book. That's not what I started off wanting when I began this eclectic journal, but that's what I've got. And I am really, really happy with how that's come out. Really happy. Yeah, very happy indeed. Yeah, so closure and then we're done. Right, get your... Oh, yes, yeah, end papers. Yeah, unusual for me to not put pockets inside book, but I just cut two pieces of this Stamperia paper that one is from the orchids and cats, believe it or not. The cat that we're going to put in it is on the back side of that. So I've lost my cat. That was so good. I need to find a smaller cat from the smaller pad and I'll pop in, in him in a pocket somewhere. So yeah, now I'm going to do a closure. So I'm just going to punch with this and I'm going to put some of these on. I'll pick my colour. I think that might be too bronzy. Might be that one. I don't know. I think I might like that. Now I'm going to go for that colour. The antique brass colour. If I've got two of those left. I always go for antique brass. So I end up... You buy these in mixed colour packs. And I end up with loads of other colours left. And all my antique brass ones get used first. So I need to find some in just... An, oh, I like that colour actually. I'm not sure what that colour is. No, oh, Now I've found the other brass one. Is that it? No, that's shinier. Mm, got the brown. No. Is that it? That's it. I'm going to go for that colour. I think it matches that plate better. So all I'm going to do... This is so easy. 
I'm going to put these on. You'll find out what ribbon I use next time because I really don't know. I've already got the eyelet set to be that far away, so I'm just going to check. Yeah, that won't come over edge at book, so I can keep it on the same setting. I'm going to line it up with that, not the middle. I think it might look odd. I don't know. Will it? And slightly lower down. So that's that. And then I'm going to decide where to put it on the back using my T ruler. Comes in handy for all sorts, this. I can see the ruler there through my hole. I'll just make a little mark. No, I can rub that off. Oh, get that out of the hole, woman. If it's not perfect, again, I'm not going to spit my dummy out. Rub that off. Yeah, I discovered that it doesn't rub the paint off when I got a bit of gilding wax where I didn't want it and I had to wash it off with a baby wipe. That's that. Oh, these are only just going to fit through, actually. Only just, but they do. Don't squeeze too hard so you don't dent the front woman. Yeah, they all they do just fit, yeah. It's not sharp. Neither's that. And then I'm just going to fasten it with some. Uh, I think I'm going to use seam binding. Let's see if I've got a colour to hand without getting any new colours out. Maybe not. I think it needs something other than blue. I think it... Oh, not that blue. Not purple. Pink's a bit too in your face, isn't it? I do like that green. Let's have a look. If I were to use that... I think I need a brown or a rusty coloured seam binding. Yeah, I do. I shall go and grab some. Back again. So I'm here with this neutral pack that I've got. I've not really used uh, much out of other than the green yet. Let's see. Oh, listen. Listen at that if you're into ASMR. If you're not, I apologise. Ooh. Ooh, that's a net. Oh, do you know I might go for that brown? See what we have got here. I think as long as it's the right tone, let's have a look. And these are all from Erin at the scrap cabin shop again. Because even if, well, I am making another dangle and putting one or two turquoise beads in, I will still want it to. I will be using the same beads, just with a few turquoise ones in. Do you know what? I think I like that. I do. We can have a brown ribbon on it. I've gone too far down grungy path now to stick a pink one on or something else. We can put all our girly pink stuff inside it. Yeah, I like that. So I'm just going to thread it. No, don't thread it through like that woman. That's not how you do it. I'm going to have about yay much. That should get me a nice bow. I will tell you how much yay much is. I'm going to get another piece that's the same yay much. So, measure on your desk, my sis, on your big mat. Yay much is... Ooh, not stretched out yay much is about 70 centimetres which is around about 30 inches Put that to one side the colour I've gone for is milk chocolate oh that's such a nice name for that Ooh. <laughs> I, I 
checked on colour or something. Was it the book? That were it. The colour of the paint on the book. I'm like, oh, what's the colour? I'm like, oh, turquoise, because it was just one word. And someone says that's because we're so used to all these uh, fancy, yummy names, and it is. So I'm going to thread those through. There we go. I'll do the same on back. And then I can tie them in a knot or a bow. You will see me doing some other bits for this journal. But the main body of it is finished now. I've got a few ephemera ideas but I'll just be doing videos on that ephemera as I make it. I've not done a, an actual journal for such a long time where I've made the whole thing so it's made a nice change. Especially as it's one I've done something I've not done before as well so I've been learning along with you. Oh I do like that. I'm very happy. Now if I were to use this dangle which I might not, I don't know. As I made this, I didn't think it was going to go with the journal and for some reason it just does. So I'm quite happy. Now, I've made it on this tiny little key ring and all I do to fasten that on is, again, not rocket science, I'm going to use some of this wax linen thread You can use as many lengths as you want. I'm just going to go for one, just to give you an idea. I will then tie that through and I will then attach my key ring to that. The reason being, not everyone wants a big chompy dangly journal, a dangly charm hanging off the journal, do they? I know some people do, some people don't. So this way you can just snap that thread. If I can even get this on. I've lost my end bit again. I'm trying to that's it, I'm trying to do it backwards ways. I'm trying to do with my right hand, sorry, with my left hand what I normally do with my right. I sort of got into that habit with that cut on my hand. And now I don't have to, I can actually do things again. So that's that. And you can make those longer and make that part a charm. But the good thing, it will move up and be out of your way so you can open your journal. But like I say, if you want to then take that charm off altogether, just snip through that. It's fine. And if it does fall off, you can tie it back on. So, oh, I quite like that now. So like I say, I will do another video on doing a charm like that. But I think I may just stick with that charm on this one. I don't know. But I'll definitely be doing a video on making that charm. Yeah. So I'm going to stop waffling and bugger off now. We've covered everything. You now know how to do a three old pamphlet stitch with seven signatures and a hardcover journal. Uh, if you want to know any other methods of binding, I have got a playlist. And I'll have it pop up here and on the screen and a video which is now so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye